Pole dancing is a very brutal sport. People might have an idea of what it's like to have a 50-year-old pole dancing mom. I'm 50, I'm still polling, and I am still can do better than anybody else. Life in Japan was busy, way too busy to do anything. I just didn't want kids to grow up like I did. And then New Zealand came, pop out, middle of nowhere. Well, I didn't know we were moving here. <laughs> I don't know if it was because I was a kid or if it wasn't communicated to me, but I thought we were, we were here for a holiday or something, you know? It would have been a huge deal, leaving everything behind, and you don't know anyone here. I think she was um, quite brave. After moving to New Zealand, we had more time as a family. People said that I was doing so well, but it was a struggle inside. I think her hobbies were a little bit, they weren't satisfying to her. There wasn't anything that was like a burning passion in her life. A few years passed, and then I started to go out with my friends and stuff. One night, I was at a bar in the city, and I bump into two girls, and then I said, so how do you know each other? And then they said, oh, we pull together. I said, what do you mean you pull together? And then I went along one night when they were practicing. It was the most beautiful thing I ever seen. Just the beauty that I witnessed. I just wanted to, to feel beautiful by doing this. So I thought, I'm sold. I want to do this. Pole now has evolved into so many different avenues. There's pole sport, there's contemporary pole, there's exotic pole. There's so many different styles. But I think it's super important to acknowledge the origins. The reason that pole is so powerful, the reason so many women and folks of all genders are drawn to it is because they want to feel that sexual ownership that strippers have. That hush hush things is like kind of give you excitement, to be honest. <laughs> I'm a little bit naughty. <laughs> I'm on the pole. I feel sexy. What's, what's wrong with being sexy? Straight away, I just went to start taking the classes. There was a bar in Ponson Bay that has a pole, and then I'm becoming a friend with the manager. And then on the weekends, I just go, oh, can I go on a pole? So I was doing that to access the pole. Then I started to have a pole at home so that I have more practice time. It was definitely an adjustment to see her pole dancing at home. You know, I didn't really know, I didn't really understand what it was about because there's so many preconceptions about pole dancing. And my husband back then didn't say anything much. The marriage itself, that it wasn't, um, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Just miserable all the time. I think it was the culmination of something that was brewing over the years, and I think pole dancing had been a really good outlet during that time. Pole was my um, release of the, all the depressed feeling or miserable feelings or the negative feelings because you don't think about it because otherwise you fall. <laughs> so in New Zealand, the law says you have to be uh, two years separation and then, then you, can, you can file a divorce. And at two years, I counted down at two years, I throw up a divorce party. And that was the best party I ever thrown. And I put the pole outside, and then we would come and have a go, and then oh, it was a great party. Everyone should have a divorce party. I didn't realize until the start of pole dancing, I'm very competitive. <laughs> My first competition I placed, 
So that kind of added to the bonus. Like, oh, I'm not that bad, <laughs> you know. Oh, let's do another one. It became clear to me that it was serious after maybe the second competition that she entered. Like going to the competitions itself really opened my eyes up to like the fact that it was a serious sport. That pole dancing is really fucking hard. <laughs> you need flexibility, strength, stamina. Pole dancing is a very brutal sport. Over the years, I've seen all the injuries that pole dancers get, and like the most recent one that she had was from doing this crazy stunt where she drops down from the pole and stops herself with her armpit. Her skin just ripped open, <laughs> and I was very like bloody mid performance. She continued performing with the skin on her armpit ripped off. Still, you know, you'd think that like having a Armpit skin ripped off would stop you from doing that activity, but no, it's no nothing's going to stop her. In 2015, I won the Ultimate Legend, so that was a, a highlight of my poor career. In 2016, I lost, and then I stopped competing. Winning those titles creates so much pressure because there's this pressure to always be innovating, always be delivering, always be like learning new, really challenging tricks. Yeah, which is why she probably took that step back for a while to just be able to fall back in love with pole dance. How do I go? have an idea of what it's like to have a 50-year-old pole dancing mum and just seeing the pride Taika feels in his mum is so magnificent. Yeah, my mum definitely inspires me. Like, it shows me that it doesn't matter what your age is or what's happening in your life, if you really care and you put the work in, you can achieve the greatest things. I'm 50, I'm still polling and I'm still kind of can do better than, <laughs> better than anybody else. I think my mum will be pole dancing forever, right? It's how she gets into that zen flow. It's the thing that kind of like keeps her heart going. <laughs>